Welcome to the Go With Your Gut podcast, a podcast to help you manage your mindset. Because if you don't manage your mind, it'll control you. With speaker, writer, and creator, Lauren Dreyer. Hello, everybody. We have a special, special guest today. Her name is Karen Laus. And let me just tell you a little bit about Karen because she is a rock star. She is a keynote speaker. She is a communication expert, a confidence cultivator, and an author of her best selling book, which is wonderful. You need to get it, is Trust Your Own Voice. Welcome, Karen. Thank you, Lauren. Absolutely. So first, I will just have you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Well, I am originally from Minneapolis, but I always had this dream to live in San Francisco. So back in the mid-90s, I landed in San Francisco and never left. So I like to say that I'm a follower of dreams, always looking for opportunities for the next thing. And I've always had a lot of external confidence, I will say for sure. And yet, I think what's important to, to note is that like a lot of us, we have this self-doubt that gets in the way. And so when I left my corporate job in 2020, after a history of a career in human resources, corporate training, and most recently 14 years specifically in training and development, hiring and coaching facilitators, but also facilitating myself in communication. I left to focus on what I love the most, and that is speaking specifically to help the hearts of women to speak up and stand out, basically ask for what you want and how to negotiate so you get it. And my mission is to eradicate self-doubt in 10 million women in the next 10 years. And it's a social initiative called 10 and 10. I love that. That is a good goal that I know that you will have absolutely no problem getting because you are Thank a you. <laughs> close to 2 million. So we're getting there. All right. Eight more years. <laughs> hey, you're on a good roll. So I wanted, first of all, as I said, your book was fantastic and brought up so many things that I think, um, I think women need to need to realize that I think we kind of brush under the rug and we just don't think about some of the things that you talk about. So I would suggest getting that. And I left my book at home today or I would show it. Oh, do you have it? No, I don't have enough. I'm oh, sorry. I'm all right. <laughs> I can well, go into my garage and get it. but <laughs> That's all right. We will put a link in the show notes to that because you need to go get it. But one chapter that I particularly loved and it kind of struck me and I hadn't even thought about it as something that I have done. And especially with women, older women today, that I didn't even know, didn't even know we did this. And that mm -hmm. is the chapter talking about um, taking opportunities and the fact that being invisible or making yourself invisible is a choice. And a lot of times, I know it was for me, we don't even realize that we do it. So tell us a little bit more about your experience with that. Sure. Well, I think about when, and, and it's such a powerful way that you said that, Lauren, and I love that you extracted that from that chapter, because so often we don't seize opportunities that might be right before us. And I will share a very recent one, and then I'll I'll go back in time a little bit. But I recently submitted an application to be a speaker for TEDx Minneapolis, and I got a call back. The interview sounded incredibly promising. She said, "I I'm hoping for good news next week when I bring you in front of the committee." And I had lots of hope in this. And Minneapolis is my hometown, so I was very particularly emotionally attached to this. Yeah. Well, I did not get it. And I spent that Sunday, that's when I got the message was a Sunday. And I spent the day grieving because I was really sad. I don't think anybody things hit me so hard in a long time. I really wanted that. But at the end of the day, that day, I said, hmm, 
I'm actually going to Minneapolis this week. I wonder if I reach out to her and say, well, I said that must have been really hard news to deliver. And I'm going to be in Minneapolis. Would you like to have coffee this week? Because we had such a great connection. And then that led to me becoming a speaker coach for TEDx Minneapolis. And then as of a week ago, when we're recording this, it's mid-June, I was asked to be an MC for the event. So sometimes things happen. And to me, that's a great example of putting yourself out there, obviously the opposite of staying invisible. But I will say, I think about when I was a little kid that I was so focused on pleasing my dad and basically pleasing everybody, but particularly him and getting his approval that I chose to stay invisible because all I wanted to do is not like I wanted to be that compliant little girl that never caused any problems. Yes. And absolutely. I do think that that's a lot. That's, that's a lot of the root for women is that many of us grew up that way. Like, yeah. I don't want to rock the boat. I'm not supposed to rock the boat because my job is to make sure everybody else is happy and I don't have any needs. Yeah. So then it makes us get more and more invisible and when we are visible, then we become more of a chameleon because we're just trying to please everybody and morphing our individual personality to be what we think other people want. Yes. And I have a question kind of based on that in another piece of your book. I don't think it was the same chapter where you were talking about your, I believe it was your theater days as a little girl mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you held back on raising your hand to take was it the lead part okay it was a lead part a lead it part. was okay. in a performing group yeah mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so I was thinking about that because I think there's so many times in my personal experience as well as I've heard this from other women as well even some men that we get offered and not even just us personally in a group it's who can do this who wants to do it and that immediate gut reaction is, oh, I do, but you don't put your yeah. hand up because you're just like immediate self-doubt kind of takes over, right? And to me, that's kind of another way of maybe subconsciously, maybe not making ourselves a little bit more invisible and talking ourselves out of something that we could absolutely do. Exactly. Yeah. I remember that like it was yesterday. I mean, even when you brought it up, I felt some emotion rising up in me because we were all sitting on the risers. It was in my early college years. I was in a performing group. There were 150 of us. And there was this one part that the director had not assigned yet. The rest of the people, like I tried out for the special dance parts and the singing parts, and I was ultimately left to be in the chorus which I was still grateful to be there. But then I remember it so well when he said, oh, who wants to do this speaking part, which was a, like a poem that was said in every single show. And I traveled with this group for a year. So every time, every three days we did a performance and I heard her reading that, I thought that could have been me. Yeah, and, it, and I mean, like you just said, you can still think about that today. It's crystal clear. So those things make such a big impression on us. So I'm curious, as I know what you do and you are good at it, I know a lot of a lot of self-doubt and a lot of fear overtakes mindset and everything when that happens to us or when we get the door even opens, even if it's not to us as an individual, but we have that opportunity. So as women, how, how do you grow in that confidence to not automatically tell yourself, I don't deserve it. My voice is not important. How do you grow in that? Well, the first step is to take some type of action. And even as the messages that you just said, like, I'm not good at this, flip that to, I am good at this. And it can literally be writing out one affirmation 
that you put everywhere in your house. <laughs> you put it in your phone. You take a picture of it and put it on your phone. I mean, anything that can help to reinforce those messages. And I feel like it's one of the simplest things, but it actually, there's so much research around affirmations that when we are saying those things, at first we might not believe it, but eventually we will. And that is a, a huge thing that I would say. And then also be saying it to yourself in the mirror, looking yourself eye to eye can also be really powerful. Yeah. But my favorite exercise I would say is the Broadway musical technique, which is where you take that message of self-doubt that you say, like, I'm not good enough. And you sing it like a Broadway musical. So if I were to say, I'm not good enough, I mean, it's a completely different feeling. So what you're doing from a neuroscience perspective is you're changing up the neural pathways in your brain to indicate to you that that message actually doesn't match with that emotion anymore. So it can be a really powerful, very quick way to shake yourself up out of those messages of doubt. So when you do hear yourself saying those messages, sing them instead, and then you'll start laughing most of the time. I love that you just saying that because I was trying to picture you singing it as I was reading that example. And I was just like, I wonder how <laughs> this sounds when, when Karen does it. So <laughs> I love that you just did that. But I- It's really fun in groups, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, I think it provides a little bit of, um, I guess I'd say tension relief because yes, I mean, when you do that, you're sitting there stewing in it, right? Thinking uh, literally stewing and you make it a bigger deal when if you say it or sing it, it becomes much less powerful over you. Yes. And I mean, there are so many things today that, I mean, every day that we can you say out loud, you talk to your self-doubt, you talk to your fear. I've gotten some weird looks when I've told people to do that. And I'm like, you look at me weird, but it works. I'm it gonna sure I'm does. Gonna try singing it. I have a horrible voice, but I'm going to try <laughs> singing it. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. It's about that whole different <laughs> energy, right? Because I'm sure a lot of people on here are thinking that same thing. Of, oh, yeah. so I always tell people, do it in your car or in the shower yeah. or something. Yeah, oh, Absolutely. So the other thing I wanted to ask, and I know a lot of people who have told me just in casual conversation that, uh, you know, they don't even know that they do things like this is even when we don't realize that we're making ourselves invisible, when we're trying to find that voice or get better at a skill, or maybe it's even moving up in a company and you just want your ideas to be known. And, you know, maybe there's a lot of, um, maybe there's a lot of upper executives at a company that are, um, maybe I say overpowering or have a little bit of a dominance tone to them. And so, you know, that automatically kind of overpowers the feelings there and brings in self-doubt. But how would you how would you tell somebody to take action if they don't know that it's even there, if they don't know that they're making themselves invisible? Well, it does start with that awareness piece. You've got yeah. to be if you're not aware, then it's it's you're not going to get anywhere. <laughs> Let's be honest with the right. reality. <laughs> Which right. is what's so about us having the conversation. And I think the first thing is to take an inventory of your actions or your lack of action and go, huh, like, for example, if you feel like nobody's noticing me, well, have you said any of your accomplishments? Have you said, hey, so-and-so coworker or so-and-so business bestie, yeah. can I celebrate a win with you? Or can I tell you what my goal is? And I feel like that, that has got to be the first step. And then, you know, the other thing that I was thinking about as we we're talking is the power of creating your own opportunities. A lot of people will say, well, there just aren't any opportunities. Well, figure out what you want. And that's often the hardest part is what do you want? 
And when you know what you want, rather than, oh, well, what's available to me, think about it again. It's like we we're talking so much here about the power of choice that right. when you figure out, well, what do I, what would I choose to wake up and go do every day for work? And is that even possible in my company? What options are there? We have to think beyond what's right in front of us. And not everybody's inclined to do that. I totally understand that. But I do think that if we can get quiet with our hearts and whether it's through journaling or taking a walk in nature or something like that, and really asking ourselves that question, like that, I love the question, what would I want if I weren't, what would I want if I wasn't afraid to want it? And that can be a great place to start. A great place to start. That's a scary place to start because then we actually have to think about the fact that we are not going for it. The first yeah. time that I answered that for myself, it took me 10 minutes to actually answer, ask myself that question. Because I'm like, oh, that means I'm accountable. Okay. Yeah, that's and true. That That's a scary piece because... I find that we we look to everybody else to mm -hmm. give us the opportunity to give us the permission or to tell us what the heck to do and what we're good at when we don't need somebody to tell us that. Yeah. And I, I mean, in the things that I see, if people actually... A, think about what they want, think about what they're good at, and then give themselves the benefit of the doubt to say, yeah, I can do that, or absolutely, and not count themselves out. That's a huge start. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So another thing I wanted, I wanted your take on is in working with women with all of these things, a big aspect is fear and some of that is rejection. So what have you found of women trying to find their voice and being afraid of that rejection or afraid of just going for it and voicing what they need to? Well, uh, it's it's a lot. First of all, anybody <laughs> listening, like nobody's alone because this is such a common thing. Yeah. And I find that people, there's so many reasons why we don't own what we want or ask for what we want. And I'd say one of the biggest ones is that fear of what if this doesn't happen, the disappointment, whether it just isn't going to work out and it's a logical reason or whether it truly feels like a total rejection. I mean, we can, we can take that in however yeah. we, we would take it in, but I feel like the fear part is something that we do need to contend with. And very much like you're talking about speaking back to it. And there's an exercise that I really like called the fear script, where you think about what fear would say to you. And then you actually write out a script. Well, what would your ideal and most highest version of yourself say back to that fear and dialogue back and forth, which I think can be very insightful because it's going to be a little bit different for all of us. And yet the same foundational truths remain. It's vulnerable to ask for what you want because exactly of that feeling of being rejected or rocking the boat or all the things I mean, it's such a sad cycle, right? Because ah. when you, you think about it, okay, I don't want to, I want to overcome self-doubt, but then I do these things, but then I'm still afraid. And there's, there's a lot of challenges there, but yeah. I do think that kind of bringing it back a little bit here to a very tangible thing that we can do outside of some of like the affirmations and more of the psychological things that are very important because mindset I'd say is 80% of it in our lives. But then there's also the tactical. How do I actually come across when I speak? Am, is my voice projecting? Am I standing tall or sitting tall in those meetings? Do I voice my opinions or do I stay quiet? And to your point about that being a choice. And so I would say one of the number one tips that I would offer people is to 
record yourself on video and see how you come across. And whether it's working with someone like me as a coach on that, or simply with a friend or somebody, but being able to see how you come across, because you know how everybody says, I hate the sound of my voice. I mean, so many people say that, but I always tell people, wouldn't you rather hear it? How the everybody else in the world is hearing it. Yeah. And, and so I'm sometimes amazed at people just not wanting to hear the reality. And so that's already a huge step. If you can have the reality check of how you look physically and how, how you come across it, it's what everybody's seeing anyhow. So you might as well get over that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're said than done. Yeah. Uh, much easier said than done, but again, that like, it's a huge step to be able to do that. And the more, I mean, you, you can do it with yourself, right. And just record a voice memo. And right. I have done that. And it was very interesting because I mean, it took me a good handful of times to get my voice where I wanted it to. And I almost had to get mad at myself to get my tone where I needed it to. Cause I'm like Lauren quit doing that. Why do you sound like that? And I feel like I was almost rejecting my own voice, which was a little bit sad in itself. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it, it helped to say, okay, mm -hmm. if I feel like I'm doing that to my, if that's how I sound to me, mm -hmm. think of how unconfident and shaky I would sound talking to any other person other than the people that I trust the most. Right. Yeah. And I, I wanted to go back a little bit and talk about uh, your TEDx experience, because I think this is a great example of uh, being able to find your voice in a different way than you expected. Because so many times we have this vision idea of here's what I'm going for and here's what it's going to look like when in all reality, maybe it'll look totally different than you thought. Mm -hmm. And I love that you were talking about, you got that disheartening email and you turned it around because normally anybody would say, oh, I didn't get it. And you just kind of sulk for a few minutes and then you move on and just say, well, I didn't get it. I'll do it next time. But instead it was, no, I'm going to find my voice. I'm going to pivot and I'm going to go for something else. And it turned out to be probably what I'm guessing is an awesome experience and a whole yeah, new thing. It is. Yeah. But something that I learned back in my day of attempting direct sales is you get a lot of no's and then you call it not yet. Mm -hmm. And so good. We get we get that rejection mm -hmm. and we feel like our voice has been, you know, dampened somehow. And we get that we get kind of down into the dumps, right? And then it and then you say, No, I'm still doing this. You find your you find your voice, you find your grit. And you say, how else can I go about making this happen? And I was not expecting to go that way with this right now, but I think it's such a powerful example of find your voice in a different way than you expected to. Because life throws curveballs at you and you got to learn to, how to hit the different pitches. Sorry for my sports analogy. I didn't know I was going to say that either. <laughs> it works. It's true. Yeah. I feel like that is, that's been so much of my life. And that's why I love that chapter because it really is about seizing opportunities and finding them when you didn't even know they existed. And when I think about my history from a, a career perspective also, it's being open and thinking about, well, what might fit here? I mean, I have created three different jobs for myself in different companies. 
And I just presented a job description to my boss and said, this is what I want to do now. I, this is how it meets the needs of the company. Again, it goes back to also knowing your audience and how is this going to, how is what you're, you're going to do benefiting the world rather than just you? Yeah. And I think paying attention and I mean, one of my favorite stories, which I decided to put in the book too, is when I did a corporate training in uh, Malaysia. And I remember shaking hands with one of the guys, it was all men, all Asian men. And he said that he was from Thailand and being my overly eager American self, not having met him for more than two minutes, I said, oh, I have a layover in Thailand next week. Maybe you could show me around. <laughs> he, he was quite shocked and I felt a little embarrassed. I was a little bit too you know, forthcoming, but I didn't right. really mean it. But at the end of that day, he actually said to me, I want you to call me. I want your flight information. I'm going to have my driver pick you up. And basically his HR people took me around all day in their corporate van and bought me all this stuff. And I had no idea. I mean, and then he met up with me later, took me to lunch, took me to dinner, took me to the King's palace. And, and it was no weird romantic, anything. It was yeah. truly just, Hey, I want to show you around. And I had a layover there for a day and I had the time of my life, but if I hadn't, again, and that wasn't something I was trying to do. Yeah, It was more of just being myself. And I'd say that that's where, to me, that's the lesson of be yourself and then also take note. Like people want to help you if you're likable. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, that, that's such the core of what I like to talk about, because for me, going with your gut is exactly that it's yeah learning how to be yourself and you know I mean you are a speaker I do that as well but it doesn't matter how how you choose to use your voice you can use it in any way that you want to and you know I was listening to somebody a couple weeks ago talk about they use their voice and they process through writing songs. And I mean, listen to music. So many people do that. And I think it's, it's critical. And so many opportunities and doors open when you finally embrace who you are and say, I know what I'm capable of. I know I can do this. And if nobody else will speak the positivity into yourself because you are worth it. Yes. And sometimes we have to do that. There are some of those days where you got to give yourself a high five and say, we got this. Yes, exactly. It's true. <laughs> there are just those days. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's not fun to catch those, but sometimes you got to pull yourself out of that place. But being able to be you, be authentic, and figure out how how your voice needs to be heard because it's different for everybody. And and maybe it's just all the kinds of people that you work with, corporate or otherwise, that you know just want a voice in the company. Or maybe I'm sure you work with people who need just a voice in general in just everyday life, right? Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. good gosh, that's a thing too. <laughs> right, right, it is. Well, boundaries is such a big thing. Uh, I work so much with, with people and boundaries. And even just today, I'm in a business group of women and one of them realized like the, their client had kept talking about budget being such a challenge. And then they went and hired a different person that does something similar to her for thousands of dollars. But part of it is because she didn't share the breadth of her services yep. and she, and, and it's, it's that whole educating our clients. And I don't love what this, the guy did, the, the one that was the business person on the other end of the line, but it also is something where we need to look at ourselves and go, did I fully highlight 
what I have to offer, what my capabilities are, what my services are. And it's the same whether you're in a job too. Are you are you showcasing the greatest version of yourself? Or, you know, I was working with somebody who basically was leading this company, but she kept giving everybody else the credit and they weren't thinking about her in this capacity of leadership. And we worked together just over a year and she recently basically with strategy owning her gifts she now negotiated a job as a leader on the semi-executive team like one step down from the executive team people saw her i mean she just took the steps out and she negotiated a, a big raise for herself and has this new title that she proposed but again you know, you always hear people just want to tell you what to do. Like, I just want to go to an exercise class and have the instructor tell me what to do. So much of that is life too. And yep. people, if we come to them and say, here's what I propose, here's the value that can offer, will you say yes? And I had a, a boss that used to say, make it impossible for me to say no. She said, people come to me all the time and they want me to solve their problems. Solve your own problem and tell me what we're going to do about it. So, and no, it doesn't work all the time, but it's definitely a way to take ownership. And like you said, it's the accountability piece. A lot yeah. of us don't want to be accountable. Absolutely. And I mean, you can do that. You could take that to a lot of different parts of your life of, you know, just not being passive and waiting for somebody to tell you what to do, but saying, here's the action I'm going to take because people make People have to make so many decisions throughout the course of day, weeks, excuse me, all the time. And it is so refreshing to find people who are just like, okay, here's the problem. Here's what I've come up with. Are you good with it? And yep. even if it's exactly. not a good solution, there's the piece of they found the issue, even if it's not the right solution it sheds a whole new light on you as a person. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, we are coming to the end of our time. Would you tell people how they can get a hold of you? Sure. Yes. KarenLaus.com is the main hub, my website, K-A-R-E-N-L-A-O-S.com. And I'm also on Instagram a lot at Karen Laus Official. So LinkedIn as well, but I'd say that connecting with me more personally on Instagram is where I am. Okay, wonderful. And guys, if you have not gotten Karen's book, I will put a link to it in the show notes. Please go get it because there are some lots of good tidbits and things that she talks about. And you get some of the fun stories that we were talking about. <laughs> but either way, find a way to find your voice and to do that, go with your gut, know who you are and don't be afraid to use it. 